Hey, we're back, and we're here with the Cambridge CXN V2 Network Streamer DAC thingamagigger. Uh, did we not do this before? We did. Deja vu. What's that poking out of the top? Is it tubes? It's tubes! This is not, as you may have guessed, your stock CXN V2. This is the ModRite Instruments Truth Mod variant. You know I love wacky, off-the-beaten-path stuff. You know I love boutique stuff. And you know I love tubes. How could I not be excited about this? And I am excited about this. Uh, I had the CXN V2 for like three years. Very familiar with it. Big fan. You can watch the full breakdown of that where I go through its features, its flexibility, and sound. And its sound is very good. It's got dual uh, Wolfson DAX. They sound... Um, they sound really good. It's a great sounding unit. I use it even as a DAC, like desktop style, and compared it to other very high-end DACs. And I was like, you know, this thing is pretty great. And so for those not familiar with um, with Mod Wright and Dan Wright, and that would be fair, sort of a boutique affair, um, they, uh, Dan and, and company, sort of got their start back in 2000 uh, modding nice units like this. So they'd find stuff from Oppo and Sony and Cambridge that they liked, they thought sounded good, they thought it was a good price for performance ratio, but could sound better, especially with tubes. <laughs> so they would, you know, mod these things with better power supplies and analog output circuits and yada yada. And and that's this is this is one such thing. And this mod is here's the heartbreaker right up front. This mod is not offered through um Modrite anymore. Modrite's moved on to building their own, um, you know, full solutions, preamps, uh, power amps, phono stages, etc. Um, but <clears throat> these do come up on the used market, so I'm still sharing with this with you guys. I got mine secondhand. They do come up. I have been watching, um, so they are available. Quite a few of these were done. Um, but also, I'm going to talk a little bit about six two uh, six nine two two tube rolling. So hopefully, that's of interest to folks as well. Uh, towards the end of this guy, so skip ahead if you're not interested in this guy, but just want to talk tubes. Um, so, what do you get? Originally, this mod cost fifteen hundred bucks. It was about a thousand dollar MSRP unit back in the day. Uh, now I think they're maybe eight or nine hundred bucks uh, retail, and there's lots of the stock ones in the user market for you know five six hundred bucks ish. Um, so this is a fifteen hundred dollar modification. Um, if you provided your own unit, so 2,500 bucks all in. Uh, now used market, it's, it's hard to say because there is a limited quantity. So even though the tech's a little older and it's a modified thing, they kind of fluctuate. But if a used stock CXN is in the $600 price point, then say two to three X that for one of these, these mod right mods. Um, what you got was um, replacement of the power supply for the DAC, not for the CPU. They left the like uh, switching power unit in there. Um, and then a complete analog circuit, tube based from the DAC out. Um, so linear power supply, very nice transformers, um, you know, um, high voltage chokes. It's Lundale output transformers, really nice parts. All the op amps are out. It's fully balanced out of the analog stage. So what you end up with the signal path is DAC analog filters, 6922 tubes, um, uh, transformer, the, the Lundell gapped uh, output transformer, and then that's straight to the RCA XLR connectors. Boom. Very clean signal path, very nice components, very nice sound. Yeah, how does it sound? Uh, well, as I mentioned, I owned the stock unit for a long time, lots of hours on it. Um, but at the end of the day, it's still digital, and it's in my system with my analog system. And, you know, going from one to the other, it, I felt it. I felt like, ah, that's not, you know, that's not the same. And I thought about, like, where do I go from there, from the CXN? And it does have digital out, so you could get maybe a different DAC, dedicated DAC that you liked more and still have all the convenience features of the streamer. Um, but when I found out about this mod, I was like, ah, yeah, that sounds really intriguing. And so when I got this thing, it is, you know, it's, it's heavy. <laughs> it's like, 
I don't know, two, three times as heavy as the, as the stock CXN. So when I had the two, I'm physically swapping them and I'm like, Ooh, yeah, something's different here. And it's all the iron. I mean, it's all these transformers in here. I'll try to get a picture if I haven't already shown one of the guts of this thing. Um, it sounds noticeably different. It's, it's, it's not like a subtle, like, Oh, what did they fix? Oh no, it's, it's, I mean, it's not night and day, but I mean, it's, it's a serious step up. And what you're getting is a more powerful sound. Like it, it sounds solid, grounded, substantial. The bass is definitely deeper, definitely digs deeper and has a lot more weight to it. Um, and it's got a fluidity to it. You know, it's, it's got a, a smoothness to it. That's not soft. It, it is a few steps closer as I hoped it would be to analog and the gap from going from listening to an LP to listening to something digital on here is smaller. And that's great. That makes me happy. <laughs> so it takes a few steps closer towards my analog experience and the dimensionality. The soundstage gets deeper. The separation gets better. It's just a more realized experience in listening. So a plus there. Now let's do tube rolling. All right. This puppy comes, like I said, two, six, nine, two, twos, one per channel. Um, very popular tube, lots of current production stock. Um, I believe that, uh, 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 Dan, Dan was shipping it with the JJ's, which are, they're good. They're, they're meaty. They're, they're punchy. They're a nice tube. Very affordable, very easy to get your hands on. I don't mind these. They're not as good as it can be, but I don't mind them. Um, some folks like the um, uh, Electro uh, Harmonix. I have never been a huge fan of these. I've tried these a couple times. They've got a gold pin version, a standard version. I've tried these a couple times in a few different preamps um, and gain stages on power amps and... Um, phono stages and I just they don't click for me they feel a bit like they're trying to be hi-fi but they're not high I don't know they're a little dry they're a little flat they just don't they don't click for me they don't add the beauty um all right what else I don't have one oh look here's me holding an invisible tube can you see it um gold lion very nice that's probably my favorite new production um I mean there's some pretty cool um, other wacky Chinese ones out there, but that one I like a lot. Um, it, it's probably my, 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 my go-to current production. <laughs> it's go-to. I don't even have one. That's how much I love them. It's actually, they're all in use and things. Um, but very, very solid. Oh, I'm going to pull this guy out. Um, very solid, um, performance from the, from the new, new production. All right. So let's talk about the sort of new old stock big categories, right? You've got, um, you've got the world of like your British, your Mullards, your Genelex, your Brimmers, your British category. You've got the like, um, German, the Telefunk, Siemen, Volvo kind of area. And then you've got the like, um, Phillips, Amperix, uh, you know, the Holland, the Bugle Boys, um, the Mazdas, um, some in France, some in Belgium, um, that, that sort of category. Like, I mean, there's much more nuance to this, and I am also not the be-all, end-all subject matter expert on tubes, but if we sort of break it down into those big categories and talk about them, they do have characteristics that, in my experience, do kind of bear out. So, first off, the Brits, um, ca characterized by, um, you know, a, a warmth, um, you know, sort of tubiness, <laughs> attractive, um, the mid range and lower mids are, are full, maybe a touched bloomed. Um, the top end is smooth and silky. It's just pleasant. It's not rolled off. It's not boring. It's just, it's just pleasant. Um, and these are, so these are some, um, Mullard's branded GE, you know, this is the thing in tube land. Everyone's made by everyone, branded by everyone else. Um, so it gets very confusing with this new old stock stuff and you really can, um, get sold down the river. So I recommend if you're going to buy vintage tubes to buy them from a trustworthy source, I go to, um, Brent Jesse is just an encyclopedia of tube knowledge. I'm happy to help and advise has all this in stock tubes and all this pricing on his very 
um, <laughs> sort of <laughs> impenetrable website, um, but it's all very transparent, and, and I like that a lot. Um, and he's pretty quick. He does like very high quality matching, um, you know, of new old stock stuff, which is harder than doing it with new production stuff because there's just a lot more variability, and, and you can't just order more tubes from the manufacturer. You've got to go hunt them down. So anyway, um, these guys I found in the CXN to be. You know, kind of romantic, kind of swoony, not sloppy, not lacking detail, but just, you know, enjoyable. They had fatter, uh, lower mids that are lush and inviting. Where I think they hurt a little bit is like the energy of the um, sort of upper mids, lower highs is like a little dull. So like, um, you know, if you want a violin, um, you know, soloist in a symphony to just come out of the speaker and just shake you by the shirt, like you, you don't get that as much. Um, but it's not to say they're boring. I mean, they're, they're, they're good. They're dynamic and they've got that, that classic, you know, British signature. Um, okay. Moving on to, here's some, not a lot of exciting markings here, but the, uh, these are, um, Siemens. So that's like, think Telefunks, think Volvo, think, uh, Lorenz, uh, other German made, you know, these are going to be characterized by like very um, airy top end, very large sound stage, um, just very crisp, very performant, very detail oriented tubes. And I think that's exactly the experience that I had here in the model, right? It is um, more focused. There's greater clarity. Uh, everything just takes one step closer to you. It's a bit drier than say the Mullard. Um, wider sound stage, but maybe a little shallower, but they're, they're surgical. They're exciting to listen to. The detail is like very tangible. Um, just a really rewarding, rewarding tube. Um, and then our sort of third category, um, this is a Amperix, um, branded bell. So this is actually probably the guts are, um, made in Holland, but then finished and assembled in India in the bell plant. Um, so, uh, I have also had pairs of Holland made, um, bugle boys in the past as well. Um, so yeah, I mean, I think, the, you know, this, this, this sound profile is, is pretty consistent. Um, and you know, these are going to be more, uh, these, these France, Belgium, Holland, tubes are going to be more, um, they're sort of more balanced, right? So you've got, you do have some nice top end and some clarity, but you have a little more, you know, mid range warmth than the Siemens. Um, the base is a bit maybe tauter than, than the Mullards and, um, you know, but maybe still a little bit meatier than the Siemens. So, you know, it's a kind of a nice split in the difference kind of tomb. And that's, that's what I found in, in the mod, right? Is, uh, you know, it was, it was, you know, presented with a real clarity and with a real ease, less weight, less body, um, and, and maybe less energy. Um, but just overall, you know, maybe a little polite, maybe a little light footed, um, but you're getting the detail and you're getting some more. So it's a very nice compromise. And Hey guys, tube rolling. What the heck, man? So cool that you can, this is not like EQ. This is not like the way in which you are shaping the sound characteristic by changing this valve component in this output stage is, a, it's so cool. It's like, I, I don't know. I don't know. I, I'm geeking out, geeking out. Anyway. So for me at the end of the day, the, the, the Mullards were, were my jam that was in here when I started the video and that'll be in here when I'm done with the video, they worked really well because I do think the level of, um, energy uh, coming off this unit responds very nicely to um, that that sort of soothing warming effect and and for what I was looking for a, a step closer to vinyl presentation match made in heaven anyway um, yeah hope you guys enjoyed that one got a bunch of fun stuff coming up uh, I'm sure no one is watching at this point so no one will hear this but yeah lots of cool um, more headphone gear more um, two-channel um, gear as well so yeah until next time, my friends, enjoy your tubes. This is Signcraft, signing out.